St. Helena lies in the middle of the Atlantic, well within the tropics. When the Portuguese discovered this island at the start of the 16th century, it was covered in lush forests made up of many unique plants found nowhere else. Unfortunately, generations of introduced grazers, together with alien plants brought by visitors and settlers, have forced the native plants to retreat to the most remote ledges. New Zealand flax was planted on a large scale to produce fibres to make string and rope for export. But after the industry collapsed, the flax plants became rampant and now cover vast areas of the island. Some native plants, like this scrubwood, are recovering, thanks to protection from free-ranging livestock. Others are not doing so well, and some, like the bastard gumwood, are down to a last few individuals. This is one of the last two remaining bastard gumwood trees in the world. There's this tree here and another on the other side of the island, several kilometers away, and that's it for the species. The entire effort to save this tree from extinction rests on these two individuals. Rebecca Cairns Wicks is a conservation biologist who lives on the island and has been working to save the last remnants of St. Helena's unique flora. How critical for the species on St. Helena did it become? We're talking the last hour. We're talking about species that were down to single individuals, which means this is the, was the last individual in the world of this species. So wow. it doesn't get more critical or, or life on the brink than that. And, and conservationists were faced not just with one species down to a single individual, several species down to single individuals. So the conservationists on St Helena were dealt an incredibly hard task to try and recover these species that were right on the brink of extinction. Sadly, we, we missed a number of individuals. So a number of, of, of species have become extinct. Um, some before modern conservation efforts, some, some more recently. Now, a specialist nursery has been set up where seed collected from the last few individual plants can be grown on in large numbers. Some of these plants were thought to be extinct until careful searching of the island's remote districts revealed a precious few individuals. So uh, this, this one we have over here yep. is the uh, St Helena boxwood. This, this one had disappeared. Um, it disappeared off the records for about 100 years. Now, with the backing and expertise of Kew Gardens back in London, seeds from the rarest plants on earth are grown on in carefully controlled conditions. And eventually, we get to the point where we have a nice strong seedling in the back here. And this one now is ready to go back and be planted in the wild. This is the Millennium Forest, begun when almost every islander bought and planted native trees. The work continues and slowly the original woodlands that once covered the island are being recreated. So, um, so 12 or 13 years it should be around the size of these ones nearby us. But the modern world still continues to pose a threat to these rare plants. An airport is being built on the island and on the only site for the St Helena barn fern. So this is the St Helena barn fern. It's a species that's been displaced by the airport construction. Right. We've uh, recovered uh, the plants we can find. This represents what we think is about 70% of the world population. Once the airport's in situ and settled down, we hope to find uh, replacement habitat for this close to where it was, and uh, it should then be successfully reintroduced into the wild. St. Helena's conservationists just don't give up. So it seems to me, that the future of St. Helena's unique flora is looking brighter. So how do you see the future for these unique plants and animals on St. Helena? 
As you say, they are unique, not just to St Helena, but to the whole world. So it's critical that we look after them. And we'll keep looking because, as we've already mentioned, we've already found a few species that we thought were previously extinct. And if we're still looking, then there's still hope. The Britain's Treasure Islands book explores the unique wildlife, cultures and history of all of the UK overseas territories. Visit britainstreasureislands.com for details. In sincere thanks to Lord Ashcroft for funding the donation of one copy of the Britain's Treasure Islands book to every secondary school across the UK and her overseas territories. Thanks also to all Kickstarter backers and all sponsors and partners for making the 40 mini-documentaries possible. <laughs>